Let's begin our discussion on evolution by looking at homologous structures. Homologous structures are bones and other structures in the body that are very similar between species. They're similar because we all originated from a common ancestor. Here we have a drawing of the human arm. In yellow, we're going to represent the hand and finger bones. In red, the lower forearm bones, and in blue, the upper forearm bones. Then, in white, we have the shoulder blade. Now let's compare that to the foreleg of a horse. Notice how the hand and finger bones have become elongated and look as though they are the lower foreleg. Now let's compare that to the bones found in a dog's foreleg. The hand and finger bones are very similar, but now notice how the radius and ulna have become elongated. Now let's compare this to a forearm of a chicken, which is really the chicken wing. The hand and finger bones have become specialized and elongated, whereas the rest of the bones have remained about the same. But this time, instead of a hoof or a paw, you have a wing. Now let's look at these bones on a live animal. Here, take a look at the horse, and in the yellow, you can notice how it is actually the hand and finger bones below what looks like the knee on the horse. The hoof is actually the middle finger. Now let's take a look at a dog. You can see in the yellow that the hand and finger bones are very similar. Dogs have many fingers, or toes, just like we have many fingers whereas the horse only has one hoof. But you can see the red of the radius and ulna that is elongated. Now let's take a look at a chicken. Of course, the chicken does not use her wings to walk. She is bipedal like humans. So why do we have all these differences? They result from natural selection. Let's first talk about the modes of selection. The first is directional. This means that the extremes of traits are chosen, either black or white in coat color. Stabilizing selection means that the middle or the moderate is chosen so gray. Disruptive selection is when the selection is for both extremes, both black and white. Sexual selection is between sexes and not necessarily environmental. And artificial selection is when humans become involved. Take a look at how this horse moves. This is a gated horse, which has been artificially selected by humans to be a smooth ride. So it does not exhibit a diagonal two-beat gait known as the trot. Instead, it exhibits either pacing, which is a parallel two-beat gait, or the walking gait, which is a four-beat gait. This makes it smoother to ride. This gait is a result of the genes. Now here is a dog. This dog exhibits the 2B diagonal trot. This is what a non-gated horse would exhibit.
No one rides dogs, so we do not have gated dogs. Now let's take a look at the chicken. Again, she is bipedal, so she does not use her wings for locomotion in this way. Now let's take a look at the gallop in a horse. This is a three-beat gait. Here the horse is on a left lead. This is the fastest of all gates. Now let's take a look at a dog. The dog is going to gallop the same as a horse. Now for those of you that are in advanced stages of gait knowledge, see she is actually on the incorrect lead in the hind end. That's why it looks a little bit different than on the horse. And for the chicken, when she flies, she is going to use all four of her limbs. Now let's talk about natural selection. Natural selection, like I said, is how we have these differences between these different homologous structures. Natural selection is how we have inherited traits that causes an organism to increase in survivability and also their offspring survivability. This is called fitness. So when someone says survival of the fittest, it does not necessarily mean that they are strong, but that they will survive and that more importantly, their offspring will survive. There are four principles of natural selection. The first is that there's variation of phenotypes, which inherently means that there's going to be variation of genotypes within a population. The second principle is that these traits or these phenotypes are heritable, meaning that they will be passed down through generations. The third principle is that populations tend to have more offspring than what the environment can support. This is going to give a uh, pressure because you have competition not only between species, but within a species as well. And the final principle is that these heritable traits that cause variations in the population are going to affect survivability and most importantly, the reproduction rates of the species. The most important thing to remember is that individuals do not evolve, but populations do evolve. This evolution is an interaction between individuals and their environment.